Hey guys, my name is John Singleton. I'm head coach of the program, and we are here today in Barcelona in Studio CrossFit to answer some of your questions about training volume and motivation. If you enjoy the video, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and we are going to keep bringing you more content. So, training volume is an extremely important topic with, within training because Obviously, the more tired you become, the harder it is to improve. Also, motivation. If you're lacking motivation, your chance of being consistent are very low, and then obviously, training is going to suffer. So, before we begin answering the questions, I'm going to start with a, a little quote, and that is, train as much as is necessary, not as much as is possible. Now, this is crucial in understanding your training volume. And this quote becomes very relative. What are your goals? Because if your goals are to qualify for the CrossFit Games, or your goals are to just to be healthy, the answer is extremely different. However, the principle remains the same. You know, obviously, if you're going to be training for the Games, the amount of volume that you need is going to be a lot higher than if you're just training for health. So just understanding that concept and also understanding where you are as an athlete on that spectrum is, is crucial to understanding how much training volume you are going to respond to and how much training volume you will need. Now, the reason we've combined the training volume and motivation is because they actually tie hand in hand quite well. If you're overtrained, you tend to lack motivation. And that ends in this continuous cycle where you go in overtrained, you're not motivated to train, your sessions fall down, that leads to more motivation. And so actually uh, managing your training volume can help stop that kind of negative cycle so you can actually start to enjoy your training again, keep the motivation there, and therefore get the most out of the sessions. So our first question comes from Gary. This Friday was hard. How do I manage to be in good form this Saturday? Is it best to cut the session short or is doing it fully the most important thing? Great question and I'm sure something that a lot of athletes will, will be wondering. So, you know, a classic answer, it depends on what you want to achieve. Now, and this, depending on where you want to achieve, comes into which training phase you're in. Sometimes we are going into a phase where we have more volume and therefore you're just not going to feel as fresh the next day. It's just understanding that you know if I've trained hard on on Friday that it will have an effect on Saturday's session but that doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. One of the things that we try to incorporate with the concepts of the program is a horizontal alteration meaning that what we're doing um, each day will be different to the day before. So if I've done very heavy back squats on Friday, then on Saturday I'm not, just, I'm not going to be going into that squatting pattern in the same way. So that means even though you may be sore from Friday's training, you can still get a good stimulus out of Saturday because we'll be using um, different, uh, kind of different training patterns, different movements, and also different stimulus to get there. That being said, we do have a central fatigue that happens, so the numbers will stop, probably be affected in some way. So if your goal is to go in on Saturday, say you're competing with friends and you want to have a good session, then maybe it is a good idea to cut the Friday sessions short so you can be fresher. However, if you're in a, just a normal training phase, then actually going through the volume of the Friday and then approaching the Saturday after having done a a full day on Friday is a good idea. You know, if you're training for CrossFit competitions, quite typically the programming can be quite random. You may have an extremely hard day on the Friday, and on the Saturday you have to go in and do it. So having that awareness of your, of your body at certain times of the year is very important. Just knowing how you're going to respond. Which parts of your body get sore? Do your quads blow up quickly? Is it your low back? Do your shoulders fatigue very quickly? And using that process so then you can start to to start working those weaknesses for the competition setting. The next question, how would you deal with a bad training day? Um, I think it's a very interesting question and, and something that every athlete 
deals with. Every athlete has bad training days. Things don't go well. They may be emotional. You know, not everyone is able to just live in a box and have no emotional attachment to what happens in everyday life. So, you know, trouble with a relationship, trouble with food, trouble with your business. The, all these factors can start to sneak in even when we don't want to and they, therefore we can have a bad training day. And I actually think the most important aspect here is really reframing what is a bad training day. Because if you set your expectations very high that you're going to go into the gym, PR every day, hit the best numbers and feel great, well then we probably need to adjust the expectations of training and start to look at it a bit of a different way. In the sense, the fact you have gone into the gym, the fact you have done the session, well those are huge positives. So the fact you've managed to go in, get things done, take that as a positive, but try not to worry about those expectations of the numbers, whatever it may be. You know, you're just putting another layer on your, your level as an athlete. And so I think for those people who feel they're having a bad training day, reframe the situation and actually look at the fact that you've gone into the gym and you've got the work done. Even if you've not made it into the gym, use that to your advantage. Take that day as a rest, enjoy the rest, and then when you have the time, get back in the gym and do what you do best. So I'm actually going to combine these two questions, both from uh, Joel and Evan. And Joel's question was, do you think there's a point where there can be too much volume? And Evan's question was, with how much volume um, there, there can be in programs, can you give us some tips about avoiding overtraining? So in answer to Joel's question, yes there is definitely a point where you can be doing too much volume. And the important thing is knowing yourself as an athlete. And the reason I combine these two questions um, from Evan with how much, um, can you give us some tips, or the final part of the question, can you give us some tips about avoiding overtraining? And so these kind of two coincide because if you're having too much volume, you are in essence overtraining. A lot of people don't like the term overtraining. They kind of prefer to think of it as uh, under recovery. And in essence, which kind of side of the argument you fall on, we want to get the most um, optimal stimulus from our training sessions. And if I'm feeling tired, that's a good sign that I'm not going to get that stimulus. Now, a lot of people these days use um, some form of like wearable technology, be it, uh, you know, there's many devices out there these days that kind of measure your HRV, your resting heart rate, and form an algorithm in order to see if you're ready to train or not. Us, we personally don't feel that the technology is at the point where it should be fully informing your decisions based on if you should go hard or not hard. We still like to ask the simple questions of how are you doing today, how are you feeling, and also look at how the athlete's performing. You know, it has this week or the start of the week been really hard for them, they've not hit their numbers, they're feeling tired, they're not feeling so well, well then we will either take a full rest, we'll reduce the volume, reduce the intensity in order to make that happen. So actually you constantly have to ask yourself this question and that's what really helps having a coach to be like, you know, you're not hitting your numbers, you look a bit tired, take the rest. Someone who can take that responsibility for you and just encourage you to take it easy. There's a, an English saying, kind of see the wood for the trees, and sometimes when you're in training zone you might not necessarily feel that you're tired or quote-unquote overtrained, but actually that's the case and that's the reason why you're not hitting the old numbers and actually with a, a short rest you'll probably come back and be where you were to begin the journey again. So the classic signs of, of overtraining are feeling, they call it tat, tired all the time. You may find that your resting heart rates increase. So if you're wake up, waking up in the morning, kind of feel palpa uh, palpations or anxious, that's another good sign. Another classic sign is not hitting top end numbers or being motivated to train. So if you're finding that you're ticking like kind of two, three of these, of these categories, that's a sure sign that you just need a rest. Um, and each athlete is completely different. Each person is completely different. Some will handle more volume than others. And so just because your training partner is able to do two sessions a day every single day, it doesn't mean that you should. You should listen to you and you should take those signs as indicators of when you need to rest or when you don't need to rest. 
In the program, we put in a scheduled deload every fifth week, meaning that we encourage athletes who need to take a full rest during that time so they can let their body recover, rather than going into what we call a forced deload, which is where you, in essence, do just get too tired so you can't train. A question from Gary. For you, what is the best way to split the sessions in a day? This is a great question. Now, a lot of CrossFit athletes will do what we call double days, meaning that they will have two sessions in the day. And quite simply, you need a break. The worst thing I think an athlete can do is try and train like four or five hours in a row and try and get everything done in one session. The most optimal thing to do is divide your session and the session should be taking for a typical CrossFit program between around two hours, sometimes a bit more, sometimes a bit less. And then ideally you would have a break of three to four hours before doing your second session again, around two to three hours, however long that may be. And obviously we're including in that two to three hours warm up, rest between sets. It's not just go, go, go for that whole period of time. So. No sessions any longer than, uh, than three hours unless you're doing specific endurance work. If, you're go if you know your session is going to be at that three plus hours, divide it into two 90 minute segments. Try and get a break of at least two to three hours in between. Take on some food so you can be rest and recovery, uh, rested and recovered for both sessions. So the next question, how do you feel about the idea of an off season? In CrossFits where athletes take break from CrossFit style workouts and conditioning to focus on strength and various skills. So, you know, I think that the term off season in CrossFit, uh, it gets very like uh, mixed and used in very different ways to, to other sports. So if we look at the traditional CrossFit season, obviously with COVID things have been moved around, moved around everywhere. But what we typically had was the open starting somewhere in February, you would then have the regionals, possibly somewhere around May, and then you'd have the games at the end of July. That gave us like a structure to the season. There were some quote unquote off season um, competitions as well. So I think one big thing is that it is important for an athlete to take a longer period of rest in the year. At least kind of a month where you're not necessarily fully focused on hard training, Give that time back to your body, spend time with your family, with your friends in order to keep that social environment a part of your life. Um, and in terms of specific off-season training, so we spoke about this or we've spoken about this before, but we really think it's a bad idea to periodize certain aspects of, of training for the majority of athletes. And that means that a large majority of athletes don't have huge discrepancies. You know, the case where you may see, may see a very big discrepancy is take an Olympic weightlifter who wants to move into CrossFit. They obviously have phenomenal 1RM top numbers in Olympic weightlifting, but their conditioning you know, in that classic, uh, classically may be not as good. And therefore, they can afford to lose some of the top end strength numbers whilst working on their conditioning. So for someone in that category, which is very rare, that may be an option. However, the majority of us don't have one thing that is so exceptional that we can't work on it. And therefore, we need to keep getting better at everything so we can become better as an athlete. So in general, it's important during to have some form of longer deload in the year. However, just focusing on one skill or aspect during the off-season may not be advantageous if you want to improve yourself fully as an athlete. We're going to go one more question, and that is, for those of us that train alone, what are some tips um, you can give us so that we can keep the intensity high? And this is a great question, and I feel brings everything together regarding training volume and motivation. Because a lot of athletes do train alone, you know, be it that they can't get to a gym, be it that they can't attend certain classes, or be it that the classes they don't feel are enough in order to get the, the stimulus that they need. So I actually think the first thing that becomes important is that you are enjoying the process. And it may sound uh, cliche, but actually if, if you want to um, stay consistent, you need to enjoy that process of going into the gym. And so you need, first of all, to go, okay, am I happy doing one session? Perfect. You do that one session, you get the most out of it. Am I happy doing two sessions? If the answer is no, well then stick to one session 
enjoy that session and get the most out of it. Don't just keep trying to push yourself to do two. If the answer is, is yes, I love doing two sessions, then that's maybe the time when you would bring in um, dividing the session. You know, obviously being able to form some, some form of online community helps. That's what we tried to do in the program. We'll kind of link different athletes together so we can share times, people can interact with one another. Um, so you're not in theory alone. It, you know, a lot of people do like knowing uh, different times so you have something to, to compete against. Um, but as a, general, uh, as a general rule, try not to overstretch yourself. It's kind of a recipe for disaster. If you just want to be doing one session, do that one session, approach it well, don't worry about the second session. Ironically, in the long run, you'll probably perform a lot better because you can stay consistent and be able to maintain that level of intensity. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Obviously, training volume motivation are both huge subjects in of themselves. And so, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and we will get back to you in the next video.